Chapter 8 was all about localized electron model, and we spent a lot of time with Lewis structures and the molecular shapes in Vesper. Chapter 9 still uses localized electron model, but we're going to focus on bonding. The key line that atoms are bound together by the sharing pairs of electrons using atomic orbitals is our focus today. In order for atoms to share electrons, in order for atoms to form covalent bonds, they have to share their orbitals because that's where the electrons live. Covalent bonding occurs when an orbital of one bonded atom overlaps with an orbital in another bonded atom. Let's start with the simplest molecule, hydrogen. In order for the two hydrogen atoms to bond, the orbitals have to overlap. What orbitals are we talking about here? Hydrogen is composed of H2, and each hydrogen has a 1s1 electron configuration. So the electron for one hydrogen is in an s orbital. And if we have H2, we have another s orbital, each with a single electron buzzing around in them. In order to form a hydrogen molecule, you simply need to overlap one of the s orbitals with another. And yes, I'm finally unleashing my full artistic skills here. You're welcome. So that's the simplest case. Let's get a little bit more complicated and make a hydrogen chloride molecule. What orbitals would be involved in that process? We know hydrogen has a 1s1 electron configuration. Chlorine has a neon core, and then it's 3s2, 3p5. So if we were to look at hydrogen's orbital, well, there would be a really small 1s orbital. And then if we were to look at chlorine's orbitals, well, you would have the inner orbitals, but then on the valence shell, you would have a much bigger 3s orbital. And then you would have those 3p orbitals. Remember, those 3p orbitals are all perpendicular to each other. Miss Smith is cringing somewhere. In the 3s orbitals, you have two electrons. It's filled. In the 3p orbitals, two of the orbitals would be filled. And one of the orbitals would have a single electron in it. And that's where your overlapping would occur. This s orbital from the hydrogen would overlap with one of the p orbitals in chlorine in order to make your covalent bond. It looks like I just drew a turtle vomiting on my page. I'm going to stop drawing orbitals and just rely on box diagrams from now on. But let's do that to look at the bonds in the methane molecule. What orbitals are involved there? We've used methane a number of times as an example. Really easy Lewis structure to draw. And we know that the resulting shape due to Vesper would be tetrahedral with 109.5 degree bond angles. And that's because hydrogen has that 1s1 electron configuration. Carbon is 1s2, 2s2, 2p2. Well, wait a minute. That would mean carbon has a filled inner shell, 1s2, then it would have a filled, and then it would have two electrons in the 2p. So carbon should only have two bonding electrons. How does it make four bonds? And if the p's are the bonding electrons, we know that the p orbitals are all perpendicular to each other, px, py, and pz. So all the p orbitals are at 90 degrees to each other. How do you get a 109.5 degree bond angle if the p orbitals are perpendicular? Localized electron model proposes the notion of hybridization. What happens is that you can take a single s orbital and blend it with the three p orbitals. Remember, these orbitals are just the graphs of mathematical equations. And so what localized electron model is doing is actually combining equations. And when you combine equations, you get new graphs. These are blended or hybrid graphs. And so we refer to these as hybridized orbitals. We call this hybridization an sp3 hybridization because you're blending an s orbital with three different p orbitals. When you blend these orbitals together and bring them together, you now have four independent bonding sites and they are spaced at 109.5 degree bond angles resulting in a tetrahedral shape. So the carbon in methane has hybridized orbitals. It is an sp3 hybridization with one electron in each of those four orbitals. And it's those orbitals that overlap with the s orbitals in the hydrogen atoms to make methane. We said that carbon had a 2s2, 2p2 electron configuration originally. That means it had two electrons in the s and two electrons in the p. 
Well, what hybridization suggests, that this S and these P's blend together to make a new set of four orbitals. And we call those orbitals sp3 orbitals. And there is one electron in each of those four orbitals. Now, sp3 is not the only way to blend orbitals. You can take an s orbital and p orbitals, and instead of blending all three of the p orbitals, you could blend the s orbital with two of the p orbitals. This is called sp2. And when you do that, you have one of your original p orbitals that's just hanging out, that's unhybridized. This unhybridized orbital is perpendicular to the hybridized orbitals. It just sticks out at a right angle. You can also take an s orbital and hybridize it with just a single p orbital. And so your resulting hybridization is something called sp. So you have two hybridized orbitals. And you still have two of your original unhybridized p orbitals. And again, these both stick out perpendicular to each other and perpendicular to the sp hybridization. I'm not going to try and draw these, so let's take a look at the diagram in the book. So we started out with methane and saw how that 1s orbital and the 3p orbitals blended together to make your tetrahedral shape and the sp3 hybridization. And I talked about how you don't have to actually use all 3p orbitals. You can blend 1s orbital and 2p orbitals to make an sp2 hybridization, and that results in a trigonal planar shape. You can also take an s orbital and hybridize it with just one of the p orbitals, and that makes an sp hybridization, resulting in a linear shape. We learned this a little bit backwards. We learned the shapes from Vesper first and are now associating the hybridizations with the different shapes. In reality, it's the hybridizations that causes the shapes that we've learned. You can also see that when you expand the octet, just having s and p orbitals is not enough. You need to start bringing in d orbitals. So for five sites on the central atom and your trigonal bipyramid, you need a single d a single S and three P's to make your DSP3 hybridization. And then for your octahedral shape, you need another D orbital. So you're gonna have a D2SP3 hybridization to get all six sites around your central atom.